this November. Office Space is back in real space in Office in Space. In space, no one can hear you collate. Featuring Milton Solo. I told them I'd blow up the Death Star if they did not give me my last paycheck. I said I'd blow it up, but do it. I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday. Mmm, TPS report missing it is. I wouldn't exactly say it's been missing, Yoda. Mmm, <laughs> copy jam that is. I hate this damn piece of crap. I hate it. There's nothing wrong with your name. Luke, <laughs> Luke Skywalker is a perfectly good name. No, my name is Lucas. Lucas Skywalker. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that name. You can go by Luke, Lucas, Luke Lai. My name is Luke. Mine. He, he should change his name. Help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. <laughs> Please call back between the hours of 7 and 8. <laughs> Come on. Please hold, you're 15 in line. Hey Han, what would you do with a million credits? <laughs> Two Wookiees at the same time, man. <laughs> you with me, I did not receive a piece of face cake. What a piece of junk this is. Hey pal, that copier copied the Kessel Report in under four parsecs. Welcome to another episode of Justin vs. Justin. I'm Justin with an E. And I'm Justin with an I. Welcome to episode number eight. We're moving on up. That That's right. I think we already sang that, though. So. We we did sing that in the past <laughs> challenge, but uh, yeah, so we're growing up. We're on episode eight now. Feels mm-hmm. good. Feels, feels you yeah. know. We're a little older. We're a little wiser. <laughs> and we're starting to get some hair in some really <laughs> weird places. Justin finally grew his pubes. You didn't tell him about my pubes, did you? <laughs> oh, so yeah, welcome to another episode. Uh, you know, we're, we're growing. We're, we're getting better. The sound quality has improved drastically. That's right. Another uh, another podcast means exactly what do you think it means. More Wayne's World references and dick jokes. <laughs> and a little bit of Michael Kine. <laughs> <laughs> I assume he's in the dick joke category. <laughs> That's Walter Brimley. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes edition. <laughs> That was that was my favorite thing about the last episode. I just kind of threw that in there. I'm like, I don't want to sugarcoat it because I got diabetes. I'm not gonna. That was my favorite too. Cause it was yeah, really, that was pretty... you ended up with a dick print edition. <laughs> I pop in diabetes edition. Yeah, because it's all about the special editions for anything. I mean, you got to get like that special commemorative tin case, or comes with like a. a Sort of comic or something of how they made Golden Girls, you know, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Golden Girls, the movie. That's that's something. Could they remake that? They could, but with an all male cast this time. Well, do you mean like they would? <laughs> okay, starring so. Robert De Niro as Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> he would be Blanche. Uh, he'd be Dorothy. <laughs> John Malkovich. <laughs> yeah, I like where you're going here because this is all making sense. Yeah, I want to take her in my room. And fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Arkin. <laughs> hey, I'm old. <laughs> Walter Brimley. <laughs> I got diabetes. Uh, his name is Wilfred, by the way. Oh, yeah, Wil- well, Wilfred yeah. Brimley. He's like, I'm, uh, I'm tired. I can't believe I'm still alive. <laughs> Wilfred Brimley is his cheaper brother. Because <laughs> <Is, is, laughs> didn't he actually Is he Sophia? Because <laughs> didn't he pass away, so we have to get his cheap brother. Oh, his cheap brother? Like uh, how Patrick Swayze has like his taller, like weirder-looking brother that looks just like him? Yeah, or like... He always the, plays like a biker guy. Or, or one of the uh, Baldwins. Yeah, definitely. They never um, seem to end. You know who's a very underrated Baldwin is um, Daniel Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, I always like... I'm like, you know what? This guy's better than like Billy Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell? And Billy Baldwin played freaking Batman in an animated movie. I just want to know, like, do they sit around the Baldwin family at Christmas and they're like, you suck. No, you suck. I, yeah, except for Alec who's like, calm down, everyone. You all suck. <laughs> yeah, pretty like, much. They're like, well, he does have the voice. <laughs> oh, another year at Alec's house. I'm Steven and I want to talk about God. Go away. You know, it's like, go figure he got weird, you know. Yeah, yeah, figure. The one that always looks like he's high. Yeah, but yeah imagine that. They, re- they remake Golden Girls with a cast of all men now. The Golden Boys. <laughs> you see, I don't think... I think if they were doing it for TV, they could certainly do that. But the fact that they were women meant that they could get away with a lot more. True. Like, you can't objectify people 
as men on TV, but you can do it as women because then it's empowering. True. So it's it's one of those kind of double standards, but it's like it's also hilarious. Well, actually, today's standards would be like golden non-denominational non-gender people thank you for being an apache helicopter (laughs) thank you for being a person of non-denominational non-gender reforming (laughs) (laughs) i approve of your identity (laughs) i don't care what they say i love you because you're beautiful if they threw a party but it wouldn't be a birthday party because i don't believe in that uh gentrification of those sort of things (laughs) Then, um, you know, I would buy you an appropriate size gift. Because you're good enough and you're great enough. And, and talk on it, it, people, people like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to jail. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, so we went all the way from Golden Girls to Stuart Smalley, yeah. right? Uh, the great Al Franken, um, former uh, senator. Former, of, yeah. Of, former uh, Minnesota, yeah. stepped down from a uh, little, little uh, grabby hands. Got, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got a little handsy there with the interns. He's got a little handsy, yeah. So um, <laughs> He told them they were good enough and great enough yeah, to talk and, on and, it. My hands like you. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I, I remember him in Trading Places as one of the guys who was holding on to the gorilla. When it was a, oh, yeah, yeah. It was dude, a guy yeah, yeah. in a gorilla costume in Trading Places. Yeah, I do remember I'm that. A, I'm a big fan of Dan Aykroyd movies. <laughs> That's the Basilmatic. The Basilmatic. Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's good. I mean, even in like the American President or something like that. Like he's been in like a, a ton of movies. That, that movie with Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon were the presidents. Yes, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually I actually that like that movie. That's a silly movie. Yeah, it, it is actually a a very underrated movie because a lot of people have never seen it, never even knew it existed. It was like Dan Aykroyd when he was going from not being fat to being fat. <laughs> so, <laughs> he makes vodka now. Yeah. Crystal head vodka. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not that good. I, have you tried it? Yeah. Is it really gross? It's not gross, but I've had better. I like, um, have you tried Tito's before? Yeah, it's like bath water. Yeah, yeah, it's, um... It's disgusting. Well, what, what do you drink then for vodka? Uh, vodka, I'm not a big vodka drinker. I guess it'd be like Grey Goose or... Yeah, I'm not a Grey Goose guy. I like Sky Vodka because it doesn't give me a hangover. Yeah, I like Sky, you know, I don't, I try to avoid the vodka. Bad now, our friend happen. Matt works with the Pinnacle... Yeah, he works. I, he I works do for enjoy Beam a good Suntory, pinnacle. Yeah, yeah, I do like a good pinnacle vodka, and it's not that it's like oh super high quality or something like that. I like it because it tastes good. Well, one time Matt, uh, oof, I can't. I I think the reason I just I don't like things with cucumber flavor anymore is uh, they came out with a cucumber flavored vodka for a while, and uh-huh. he brought that with us, and we go. Oh. Let's just say it didn't end well that night, and mm. now anything with a cucumber smell just kind of that makes me remember that the night. Other guys, it's like cucumber in the water. It's just it's so fresh. It's good. and honestly, when you you drink the vodka, it was like that. It's like oh, this is really good. It's refreshing. Wait a minute. Oh, I love this show. Wait a minute. Did we take a bribe? <laughs> It's totally a bribe. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. We were sitting there, and someone walked up, and they're like, "You have a choice, Jersey Boys." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, Jersey Boys. Yeah. Damn it, he did it again. I thought it was the Jerky Boys. <laughs> he, he did it again. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're a peacock. You got to let me fly. So if there was a movie version of Golden Girls, I imagine Mark Wahlberg would have to be in it. Just because it's like, to, to see him like humiliated would be amazing. <laughs> but I like the... him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the young boyfriend. So... You know what? I mean, we talk about this all the time, like who you could see in certain things. How come Mark Wahlberg has not done a superhero movie yet? That's a good question. I have no clue. Yeah, I mean, he has done, and to me, that's like an untapped market. Well, I don't know. Do you count Transformers? That's the only thing I would think of that he's done. But, I mean, he's also done, like, like Shooter and um, uh, Lone Survivor, which was freaking amazing. Yeah, that Lone was Survivor was a great movie. movie, yeah. I mean, he's done, like, all these things, and I'm like, you could definitely take him and plug him into any of these action roles. But I think... I think, uh, I, yeah, as, far, we agree. as far as, like, him him in there, I think he falls, that superhero category, he, it falls in the Transformers. Well, they're doing it with The Rock, right? And The Rock, as we know, is the biggest theater draw. Oh, yeah. Right? He, like, he's, like, he could he, literally just have two hours of him sitting in a chair, mm-hmm. and people would go watch it. It'd make, like, a billion bucks. Like that time that he, like, read The Great Gatsby sitting in a chair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, that was Andy Kaufman. But still, <laughs> yeah. They should take they should take not popular actors and pair them up with The Rock, just so they can. <laughs> but uh, going back to Mark Wahlberg, I mean, he's been a boxer, he's been a fighter, he's been a uh, a dad, you know. Um, he yeah, in Transformers, he was a dad. Yeah. 
he's driven cars fast. He's uh, driven planes, I think. I don't know. He's smuggled done drugs. He's danced with the back or the new kids on the block, and yep, yep, had a funky bunch. It, he did. He was a cop in New York. He's felt the vibration. <laughs> <laughs> he even makes a good burger. Wow. <laughs> We'll get to that guy next, because, <laughs> I, I mean, in terms of, like, do you remember Behind Enemy Lines? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was um, before the, wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Before, <laughs> like, he got corrupted by, um, <laughs> by Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> I don't understand. What are you doing? What? Why? You don't do any action movies anymore? Yeah, why, why are you doing on? all these serious movies? You, you know, he... You're trying to win an Oscar? What's going on? <laughs> I was in Swingers. Was like... <laughs> With John Favreau. Yeah, exactly. He was my best friend. <laughs> He's an Iron Man. We're in Four Christmases. <laughs> <laughs> Four Christmases is a great movie. No, 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 it's not. It's not. <laughs> you know, we're not a hate cast. We're a positive podcast. We put the positive in podcast. I mean, we really don't. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it, it, you know Macy, well, actually, I was about positive. to ask you about that because I have a theory. Did you at one point date Macy Gray? God, no. Okay, I was just saying. <laughs> I would have taken my life. You just hate her voice that much, don't her you? Her voice is like nails on a chalkboard to me. Okay. So right. I couldn't even date her because she'd be like, I want to take you out on a date. And I'd be like, oh, my ears are bleeding. <laughs> I just vomited in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's coming. Oh, wow. Okay, all right. So so we got a little bit more. It's, it's time. We learned a little bit more about each other. We're a little older, a little wiser, you know, as, as we said in the beginning. So You're in a forest yeah. with Heather Locklear, and it's <gasps> warm. <laughs> It's warm. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. Let's, did let's did jump you know, in there. Um, going going back there, okay. Heather Locklear was in uh, Swamp Thing 2, the no, second I, Swamp I, Thing movie. I don't think I ever watched the second one. I don't know why I always thought Burt Reynolds was Swamp Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Swamp Thing. <laughs> Made of turds. <laughs> Swamp <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> I don't know why, but Where'd yeah. you get where did you get that giant hat, Swamp Thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was under the podium. Yeah. Yeah, Turf Ferguson. Uh, so, yeah, let's jump into it. We got to start out the show like we do every week with our fashionable Week in Geek. That's right. Justin, yeah. take it away. All right, so uh, Week in Geek. Usually I like to watch a couple of movies, uh, mostly while I'm um, just hanging out, maybe doing laundry or something, or writing a review or two. And um, this week, I watched the animated Hellboy, the first one. It's okay. a Sword of Storms, featuring Ron Perlman, oh, Selma okay, Blair. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, oh, so they got else. everybody from the movie. John John Hirsch was in it, uh, or Heard? Uh, who is it? Uh, not, I believe it's not John Hirsch. Yeah, John, John Hirsch. Uh, the one who talks like this. Yeah. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's Heard. Yeah, so he was in it. Um, and, and, I mean, it's, it's basically, it, it plays off of the movie. The animation is kind of cool. And um, it's fun. It, I got it on a, a double Blu-ray uh, with this one, and then there's another one. I haven't watched the other one yet. Okay. So after that, I picked up what I said I'd be picking up, the Phantasm 5 box set. Oh, I went that's through the awesome. first yeah. one. I watched the first one twice because I wanted to get like a good reading on it and all that. And it's like it's it's a fun movie. It is a great movie. It's I not, mean, it's, it's not it's, terrible I, as far as like 80s horror well, movies. If, you, if go. you like horror movies, it's a, it's up there. Yeah. It's you know with all the rest of them. That's how you can really tell, like, true horror fan, because it's like, huh, Phantasm. Because normal people are going to go, what the hell is that? Yeah, seriously, yeah. People who actually like watching movies and horror movies always go, huh, more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. And, I mean, it always has, like, like, um, like the Burbs was like that, too, yeah. where they had, like, that one guy that kind of, that guy ain't right, you know? It's <laughs> yeah. Like, and, it's, um, and it had that moment in it that I forgot that was kind of like um, in It. When they look at the picture book and they see um, Pennywise the clown, and they look in in like this old picture and they see him looking, I'm like, oh man! And they don't really go into like what's going on on it, and that's something I kind of liked about it. They yeah. left a lot up to the imagination. Like, why are dead people turning into dwarfs? We don't know, but it's kind of scary. But it it was just really funny. Like a lot of the things are just so different from back in the day. Like they had guns just around the house. Like oh, yeah. it was like nothing. He's like, hold on a second, I'll take care of this. Goes up to the mantle, pulls out a a uh, like a desert eagle, you know, two and two clips of guns and all that. Gives the twelve year old kid a shotgun. He's like, here, don't point that at a man unless you intend to kill him. I'm like, you're a traveling musician, you know <laughs> what's going on? There's some sort of Jimmy uh, Johnny Cash thing going on here. Well, I mean, everybody back in the old '80s movies always had guns on them. 
I, I guess, unless, you I mean, know... come on, the 80s and early 90s brought us, uh, don't stop or my mom will shoot. Oh, I saw that. I actually saw that in the theaters. Yeah, at a dollar fifty, I saw that. Oh, so. honey, I cleaned your gun with Dawn. <laughs> Stop! Or my mom will shoot. <laughs> I watched that this week too. <laughs> I watched the classic. <laughs> yeah, I always try to like watch something that I think would be interesting or relevant, but sometimes I just end up watching like stupid shit for no reason. Hey, the stupid shit's entertaining. And, um, I mean, I watched, like, two or three movies that I can't even remember. Because they're just, like, <laughs> like um, I don't know, those movies starring, like, they have, like, really bad tracks in the background. Like, uh-oh. Straight to DVD. Exactly. <laughs> stuff, stuff like that. And um, I, I find out, I, I was um, just going through and, and watching some of this stuff. It's like, oh, this one's about LARPing. I'm like, oh, let me check it out. Was that the one with the uh, demon? Um, and it's got a um, no. That one was name? awesome. That, I can't remember his name. That's right. that's Knights of Badass. Yeah, that was amazing. That movie yeah. was great. I was gonna say, don't knock that movie because <laughs> that movie was awesome. You know what? When when we go back to doing like small episodes as like a feature or something like that, we should definitely do that one. Oh, like yeah. we did with Goon and all that. So and by the way, if you guys haven't listened to or watched our Goon video, please do so. Goon. It's um it's really good. And Star Wars. And uh, yeah, did I mention Star Wars? Star Our Wars. first episode was all about Star Wars. <laughs> so um, I watched Wayne's World too, as uh, I said. Nice, um, yeah. Just to kind of reaffirm myself in the uh, Church of Wayne. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Be excellent. <laughs> excellent. And uh, I mean, other than just reading like a ton of comic books, there was a big comic book sale this this week. Yeah, so yeah, you showed I me. I bought yours. like a ton of comics. Yeah, so. you were sending me pictures, and I was a little jealous. I think I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Homer on the street, Kevin hand jobs for comics. <laughs> <laughs> what issue? <laughs> no, that's I mean like that's what, a number one variant. Come here, big boy. <laughs> oh, it's funny because you're using all the right terms. <laughs> <laughs> that's the original Detective Comics number one. Oh, baby. Uh, excuse me. We want number twenty-seven. Thank I you know much. number twenty-seven. So um, I got a lot of Hellboy stuff, uh, and just thinking of. Anything else? I got like a bunch of stuff to give away because I, I give away a lot of comics with Amalgamania, so I got a ton of stuff to give away, and uh, that's what I'm. Don't lie, that's for your your windowless van. Come here, children. I have lots of giveaways. Look, I have a lot of side projects. I don't tell you about all of them, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So when you dress up like a clown and you like it when people call you Wayne Gacy for some reason. <laughs> It's Wayne's World, Wayne's World. <laughs> Kill people, put them in the crawl space. <laughs> it's the Church of Wayne. <laughs> Gacy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just get together and listen to Fountains of Wayne and, um, <laughs> and we, we Wayne, Wayne really Scott <laughs> things. Wayne Newton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, yeah, Wayne Newton, but uh, I'm really more of a Robert Goulet guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. Hey. Sorry, kid. <laughs> and uh, I think that's pretty much it for my Week in Geek. Just um, that kind of stuff. I, I, I watched a bunch of movies that I can't remember. Nothing really of note. Yeah. How about yourself? Oh, now you're falling asleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about War of the Planet of the Apes again. <laughs> I watch that to go to sleep every Hail night. Hail Caesar. <laughs> 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 Can't sleep, fall asleep to sleep to the sweet sounds of Caesar. And the circuses. <laughs> I'm a monkey. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah, my weekend geek uh, wasn't a whole you know not a not a great weekend geek this week, but a pretty good one. Um, they can't all be winners, my yeah, friend. Yeah, they can't all be winners. You know, you got adult life going on. Yeah. <laughs> if only I could get paid to sit and watch movies all day. Hmm. Yeah, we don't get paid for it, but... <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, I saw Ocean's 8. We'll start out with that. Yeah, that and... was a choice, huh? Um, um, I've got a strict well, no, the... no Sandra Bullock movie policy. The, the girlfriend wanted to go see it. And okay, did I she enjoy like, it? She fell asleep during it. Oh, right. I fell asleep as well. To be honest, this movie... It's, it wasn't that it was badly acted. All the girls did great acting it. It's mm-hmm. just the storyline was just boring. You know what I noticed about it? It had the Asian beatbox girl from Pitch Perfect in it. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm like, that's what I pulled out of the movie. And then, and then like, the only thing is, like, uh, at the end, it's like, oh, some of the Oceans guys show up to sh- help them out and stuff like that. And you're like, eh. Was that handsome Andy Garcia there? 
No, Andy Garcia was not there. They Alas, had the, he was in he was in that other movie, Book the, Club. Little the little Asian contortionist guy shows up. Oh, okay. And that's how they pull off their heist, basically. Is it Jet Li? Not Jet Li. I don't uh, know I, his name though. I look, man. I, I have not seen any of the Ocean's movies. Yeah, this one was just boring. <laughs> it was, it was just bad. Like I was, like I said, the acting was fine. That wasn't the problem. It's just the story was just like. Yeah. I saw this three times already. I'm bored. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like like we're being kind of hard on some of these movies lately, but it's like it's very true. Like starting with Avatar, when we were talking about that, and it's like we've seen it, we've seen it, we've seen it, and then then we go and watch Battleship and freaking blown away just because it's original. Yeah, you know, and I mean it's based on a board game, so it's like someone had this idea based on a friggin' board game. Well, that's what I like. I like you know? those stupid sci-fi movies that a lot of people just hate, but yeah. I like them because they're something different, like Cowboys versus Aliens. Yes, like it. They're, yes, they're complete guilty pleasure movies. A lot of people are like, "Oh, that's stupid," but I'm like, "It's original at least." But I think that's the whole thing. You're you're accentuating the fun part of cinema. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like you it's can read a book enjoyable. and it's like completely yeah. off the wall. You can you can watch a movie and, and just see it, and it's a short amount of time. And unlike the book, it's not going to take forever, so it's not a huge commitment if you don't like it. Yeah, and, you know? and you know, it's, it's, it falls in the same category. A lot of people, you know, oh, Westworld's boring and that kind of stuff. No, Westworld's a great show. I think it's Westworld's different. good. I'm surprised we haven't talked about it more. Um, I was actually just listening to uh, one of one of our favorite podcasts, the uh, Throwdown Thursday podcast, talking about Westworld. Yeah, so, no, I love the show. I have to catch up. I'm, I'm about to I've not two seen or three the episodes movie. behind. Have you seen the old movie? I have not. I've been actually wanting to watch yeah, it with Will Brenner. I, yeah, I think that we need to see that. Yeah, I think I think we should have a sit down and, and maybe a, a play by play. Yeah, what uh, uh Patsy was saying, uh, Patsy the Angry Nerd, he was saying that um, a lot of the scenes from the Simpsons Itchy and Scratchy Land with the robots were yeah. pulled directly from the Westworld film. Makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, that's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm down to watch it. Cool. But uh, then to continue my week in geek, I watched Incredibles one, followed by right before we got to starting recording this. Incredibles 2. Nice. The Incredibles 2, fantastic. If, if It's just as good as the first one. Nice. 14 so, years later. Yeah. Only, only had to wait forever. And I did uh, write an article this week about that and, yeah. um, and, and for uh, Comic Watch. It, was, uh, it turns out that the reason it was so late is because this Toy Story 4 was supposed to... I think I talked about this last time, didn't I? I don't but, think uh, you did. Toy, Toy Story 4 was supposed to be before this one. Yeah. And um, this one just came along so quick and it was so much easier for them to animate and all that. It just came along a lot quicker and it made better milestones than the other movie. Yeah. And it took 14 years because it was a circumstance with all of the superhero plots going on, they couldn't think of anything to write. Nothing original. Gotcha. I mean, at least they wanted to be original. And they were. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a very entertaining movie. The what, kid, was the Edna kid... the best character? Uh, my favorite was Jack-Jack. Yeah, Jack-Jack, okay. Because yeah. I'll say this, Jack-Jack brought all the humor in it. Okay, good. I mean, the other characters were great and all that, but... Uh, yeah, any Jack surprises Jack. on here? I'm not too concerned about spoilers and all that. I don't know if our listeners are. I don't are. think there was really any surprises. Yeah. I mean, the original cast is there. John Ratzenberger show up as the Underminer! No. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is there. Okay, he, yeah, I was just about to say, he is, he is in it. Uh, nice. But, uh... I, I refuse to see a Pixar movie without John Ratzenberger <laughs> in it. <laughs> but, yeah, the Underminer is in it. But, uh, yeah, no, it was great. I, I totally suggest going to see it. Yeah, it seems like something that's going to be fun, and um, it, it's a bit more family friendly friendly than um, the last movie I saw, Deadpool Two. So, <laughs> you know. My kids loved it. <laughs> Your kids are serial killers now. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I watch you while you sleep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm trying Don't to all think... kids do that. <laughs> Don't watch their parents while they sleep. Oh, uh, I have to say, the only part of because. You know, we we have we have a five year old in the house, and when Trolls came out, she fell in love with Trolls. Yep. And the only part that I loved about Trolls was there there was a part in the beginning where one of the little troll girls is like, "And watch your parents sleep at night." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah. But uh, as far as my week in geek, uh, I try. I, I'm close to finishing Deadwood now. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering I'm, about I that. I got about three episodes left of that. Mm-hmm. And and it's a great show. They need to make a movie out of it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's got some great actors on it. So. Oh, fantastic Ian actors. Ian McShane is amazing. Oh, yeah, he's great. Uh, 
Timothy Olafonte is great. Yeah, I, I yeah. love him actually. I think he should be in more stuff, but he was in Justified and uh, well, he was now just doing he's in Santa uh, Clarita. Yeah, Dying now he's Dying a, Dying that's and... actually a really good show. Have you watched it? I haven't seen it. My parents were telling me about it. They said it's hilarious. Oh, they, yeah, you gotta they watch eat Nathan it. Nathan Fillion. Yeah, they got two. <laughs> he's he's actually they they eat him and he just becomes a talking head. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you gotta watch it. It's actually David a really Byrne. good show. What? Watch out. <laughs> oh, da, 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 da. My Bob's going to kill me because I don't know the words. So. <laughs> but yeah, Sorry, no, Bob. <laughs> definitely go on Netflix and check out uh, Santa Clarita Diet because it's actually yeah, I mean, really funny. And it's, I'm not it's a huge, on the list. I'm not a huge Drew Barrymore fan. I'm not a Drew Barrymore fan. Yeah, like I'm not like – if there's anything Drew Barrymore, I'm like, eh. But actually she's actually really good in this, surprisingly. So other than this, I mean, Adam Sandler movies and stuff like that, it's like when was the last time you saw her in something that actually you enjoyed? Because uh, I think well, you you liked the, what was the movie about the Boston Red Sox? A Fever Pitch. Yeah, I like Fever Pitch. Um, not necessarily because of her. I know. I thought she was kind of dead weight in it. Um, yeah, Charlie's Angels. Oh, terrible. It was. And um, the other one that she was in was Fifty First Dates, which was good. Yeah, Fifty First Dates. I would give her Fifty First Dates, and before that, I would give her Wedding and, Singer. And she did Blend In with him too. In that, I've never seen. Like, Blend I In wasn't see horrible. It. It was a, it was a typical family. It's Adam got Sandler Terry Crews in it, and I'm really all about that. Yeah, but like I said, it's it's not a horrible movie. It's worth a one watch kind of movie. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out. Like if you got a family and you're like, oh, I need something that the kids can watch. Blended works. Okay, it's a good movie. all right. It's nothing that you're like. But, oh, um, I'm gonna go out and run out and buy this movie. That's that's the thing. Besides like E. T. and when she was in like one of the Poison Ivy movies or some crap or like. Kiss of the Vampire, like some. Oh, Skinamax she was movie. in a movie like that. Yeah, yeah, she was. She was in like Poison Ivy three or something. So it's like, but that that's the thing. She is unexciting as an actress. She is, and yeah. that's why I said I, when I first started watching, I was like, oh, Drew Barrymore's in it. I don't like her. And and you know, and, it's, it's not because she's not cute or anything like that. It's just because the way that she did delivers lines and all that. Yeah, she's very flat. It's boring. But I have to say, she does in this show with Timothy Olyphante. They were great together. She's good? Okay. And it's actually a very enjoyable show. Because like I said, I'm not a huge fan of her. Yeah. I'm not really running out to watch anything of her. I don't think I, I realized that I was not a huge fan of Drew, uh, Drew Barrymore until we just had this moment here. <laughs> don't lie. I saw that Never Been Kissed poster up on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you saw that, did you? Well, we have laugh tracks now. <laughs> Why? We just laugh at everything. Anyway. I know. <laughs> We're like Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> we are wearing our tight pants, so. But um, yeah. With with this, um, I just watched. I did watch Atomic Blonde again. Have you seen that? I one? did. I, I watched it one time. I haven't watched it twice. It's but it's um. Charlize Theron does some pretty good action scenes in that, though. B- besides the fact that she does action, she does drama. She she can do comedy. She can do all that. That's someone who's like, no matter what, she's interesting. She is, and and I, I got to say, her movies are usually pretty good. They're not memorable, like, you know, I'm Like not Young gonna, Adult or something like yeah, that? Yeah, well, like, right. Flux, and... I, I kind of... I mean, I, it's, it's a movie, me. I like yeah. it, but... I like the way the movie looks. Like, yeah. I think, like, stylistically, it's very, like, Matrix-like. So when you look at it, you're like, yeah, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's it's mean, like... But it is not great. Like, no, I'm not no. going to at all tell anybody that it's like, oh, man, and they did this and this and this. Be like, no, this is, like, just fun to watch on mute or something like that because she's running around and jumping and stuff. It's 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 cool to watch. I mean, she was in the last Fast and Furious movie. Was she? Yeah, she played uh, the villain. Well, dude, I haven't seen any of them past five, so I'm like, Oh, yeah, yeah she played the villain in Don't the last Don't worry, you won't spoil it for me. She I'm sure someone villain. drives The only problem fast. I didn't like, she had, like, her hair in, like, dreadlocks and that shit. And I was like, yeah, stop, you don't look good. Didn't she do that? No, that was. I was like, well, actually, I shouldn't say dreadlocks. It was like the Bo Derek braids. Mm, Bo Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, there is one other thing I did do for my weekend geek. You watched Tommy Boy with Bo Derek? No, I watched Tomb Raider, oh, which yeah. made me walk away and want to oh, <laughs> forget it ever happened. You know, it's it's so funny too because I remember how we were like excited it was coming out, and we're like, yeah, we did a podcast, and then um, the podcast like it it got destroyed or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was beheaded in a routine car accident. You know, it was the run by fruiting. Yes. Perhaps Hello! you not tipped the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Our podcast committed suicide. Or and, and, I don't know. Well, I mean, naturally, it found out we were talking about the new one and killed itself. Oh, from that uninspired bike chase in the beginning to yeah, the like halfway not, through the movie. And, and when he says bike chase, he's not talking motorcycles or anything cool. 
He's talking a 10-speed bicycle chase. It's called a fox hunt, and um, it's meant to be, like, a bunch of couriers having fun, and they, they, like, all put in money, and whoever wins or catches the fox, like, gets to keep the money. Yeah. And she needs money because she's a rich girl, but she refuses to accept her rich heritage, right? So um, she they put a uh, can of paint on the bottom of, of her uh, bike. They poke a hole in it, then they follow the paint, and... Um, it's Ugh. just horrible. Ugh. God awful movie. The worst scene in the first Tomb Raider movie with Angelina Jolie was better than the best scene in this movie. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I mean, seriously. I mean, it it she could have done zero stunts in the original Tomb Raider. It could have been all CGI or something like that, and I would have still liked it better. Oh, I the first two movies that Angelina Jolie did by by far. I really more, liked Cradle of Life. I thought it was cool. I, I did too, and like they were very, very entertaining. This one was very boring. I think that's um, that's a trend that I'm noticing on a lot I mean, of these movies. They're really boring lately. Yeah, I mean Alicia Vikander, she did good. Yeah, yeah. I mean she fit the role and everything, but the role is just written really bad, and the villain is horrible in this movie. I mean Walton Walton Goggins is not <laughs> <laughs> does not strike fear in me. I think you don't him, fear his I hairline. I think of him as principal, um, prince, vice principals. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm gonna take over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That's how I picture him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is kind of hard to shape out of your mind after you see him in vice principals. But I mean, I remember him in House of Thousand Corpses. I remember him as uh, like a bad guy in uh, was it Hateful Eight or was he the good guy in Hateful Eight? Um, it was one of those movies. I don't know. No, he was. He's been in a lot of westerns. He's been in. Yeah, he has done his fair share. Well, he did Justify. That was, was he in Three Ten to Yuma? I don't believe so. He was in the Jang, uh, Django. Yeah, Django. That's what it was. Uh, the Django. <laughs> yeah, he was in Django. He was in uh, Predators. Predators. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's in Ant Man and the Wasp coming up. Yep. He's finally breaking into the MCU. Um, he was in Cowboys versus Aliens. I rem- I recall that. Uh, Machete. Machete. Uh, G.I. Joe, Shanghai Noon. He was in G.I. Joe. Yeah, he was in G.I. G. Joe uh, Retaliation, the one with The Rock. Ah, so another yeah. guilty pleasure movie. It is. Uh, the G.I. Joe ones are. And if you want, there are five do- the, the first G.I. Joe movie is $5 Blu-ray at Walmart. Mmm, I already own it. I found it. I almost picked it up, but I was like, eh. I did reach out to Ray Park this week. So and then he um then he liked something I I said on Instagram or something like that. So, yeah. He was in uh, Forever Young. Was he the kid? No, he couldn't be. No, he couldn't be the kid. Yeah. Who did he play? That was with um. Elijah Wood was the kid in Forever Young. Yeah. Yeah. Mel Gibson, Jamie Lee Curtis. I was confused that with the man without a face. I don't. I don't know why. It just seems like they came out at the same time. Yeah, they but they well they're kind of the same story almost. Pretty much. I mean. That was good. That was good, Mel Gibson. Yeah, back in the day, yeah, those were great Mel Gibson movies. Man Without a Face was a fantastic. Yeah, movie. it was a good movie. Yeah, that was Nick Stahl, I think, right? Yeah. In that, so. Yeah, I can't find anything. But Goggins, yeah. Goggins is 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 a good actor. He's a serviceable actor. He's he's, he's a well, human. He, he has certain roles that he fits into. In menacing villain in a Tomb Raider movie does not fit that bill. Because you think it would too. You think it would. But maybe uh, maybe there's just something else going on. He just on. comes off a little bit too flamboyant sometimes, yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah. like, yeah, no, it just doesn't work. So um, Olafante, what if he was in that? It might have worked. It might have worked. Yeah, but not really, because even he has that good guy persona. You know who I think would have been a better val- villain? Who? Chris Kattan. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Feather. Think about it. <laughs> that's see, that's uh, right. This is the first time in a while that we've brought it back to uh, undercover brother and not talked about the general's fried chicken. <laughs> I'm just now picturing Chris Kattan in that Tomb Raider movie. All oh, right, the tomb, Laura. <laughs> you guys want some mummies? <laughs> or your mom? That's how. That's how we party over here with you people. I would. I would. Um. <laughs> I don't know. Don't be dissing me. Yeah. I mean, besides um, Night at the Roxbury, which I, I think is a funny movie. Like, I, oh, yeah. I, I Night actually at the Rock- like Chris Kattan is terrible. Oh, yes. He's so terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> How he made it in Hollywood, I don't know. Uh, he's got to know someone to be someone's cousin or something. Or he has to know. do unfavorable pleasures to somebody. 
I don't know. Maybe he's into it. I don't know. <laughs> he might be. <laughs> he's, he has Chris Kattan. Well, so. I mean, like we we talked about that last episode, didn't we? Jim Brewer and yeah, uh, Norm yeah. Macdonald absolutely hate him. Yep. So that's yeah. why I brought him up. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> You want to know who would make a really good villain for a two? Who could they could have replaced it, and it would have been really great. O.J. Simpson, Michael Caine. Oh, Michael Caine's always a great villain. <laughs> well, actually, you want to know who would make a great villain for Alicia Vikander? Who? <laughs> would you like some Jello gelatin pudding? And oh, <laughs> oh Bill <man>. Cosby. <laughs> You drugged me. Oh no, da. I got some beers in my tent. Would you like to come visit? You think he regrets doing pudding pops and all that? I'm sure he does. Yeah. I'm sure he hates his life because I'm sure there's always that jackass that runs up and like, Channel, Channel, to pudding. He's like, shut up, asshole. You know what's so funny? If he's going to be in jail, no one can, like, they just won't be able to get away from him. You know, he'd be like, ah, I'm a pudding. <laughs> what about if they send him to jail and they're like, you've got kitchen duty, you're making jello? <laughs> oh, man. That'd be his great. life will come full circle. He's going to teach everyone to read with picture pages. <laughs> 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 He's like, we're a mean podcast yeah, we aren't are we? right now yeah <laughs> yeah. I learned from Morgan Freeman how to act in prison. Is is he gonna go to prison too? No, or? he's suing okay. the girl that accused him. All right, so I so I, mean, so I guess I have a hard time with all this. We, we were talking about talking about news and and everything in the show, mm-hmm. starting to integrate news, and I guess this would segue perfectly into right now the fall of Nerdist. Right now, yeah, what's going I on mean, there? Chris Hardwick being accused of being. Uh, I, I, you can't say a sexual predator or anything. He was just abusive, she said, and everything. But um, I saw today that he responded and actually showed proof of all the text messages. And basically, he broke up with her, and then she was just trying to get back with him. Like, she sent him, like... So there like, might be some sort of vindication for him? Yeah, it seems like everybody kind of jumped the gun, because I feel sorry for the guy. The guy, he's he got removed from AMC's Talking Dead. He got... Everything that references him on Nerdist is gone. He his basically his career. Was so he's a removed. pariah. Yeah, he he got shoved shoved out the door real quick without before even being proven guilty, and he produced the tech all the text messages from back like three years ago, of like him you know saying oh you cheated and it's over I don't want to see you in again again anymore blah blah blah, and then he literally produced like three months later of all these texts of her like I will do anything to get back to you I want to be with you. Can we talk? Blah blah blah. I'm like, and everyone's like, now now it's like everyone's like, yeah. Well, if she was if he was really abusive, would she want to go back? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean that's that's the whole thing. And um, where where does it start? Where does it st- stop? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and, and she's accusing him of ruining her career, and I'm like, I've never heard of her to begin with. Who is it? It's not like Olivia Munn, right? No, it's something Dykstra. She's a cosplayer and a Twitch person and all that YouTube and. She was uh, she was even worked for Nerdist for a long time. So really, yeah, I don't I don't know why she's you know saying that her career was ruined. I'm like I've never heard of you to begin with. <laughs> yeah, fact, no, I don't I don't know either. You know, I'd hate to say it, but if it wasn't for Chris Hardwick, would we have ever heard of you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of messed up. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I feel bad for the guy. His his whole career has been shoved. You know, he's been taken away from him. His everything he's worked for. Uh, Chloe Dykstra. Yeah, is, Chloe is Dykstra. Name, that's so. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Um. I don't know who she is. Uh. But I mean, that's that's kind of crazy. I thought he was married. I think he's. Is he married now? I don't think. He, I think he's married now. Yeah. But I mean. Um. I feel bad for the guy. I I saw something like two weeks ago where he had purchased one of the original paintings from the haunted mansion. Yeah. Where it's like those old fashioned, like really big ones. And he was like so excited and all that. I'm like, well, oh, I follow cool. him on Instagram. He's been remodeling his house and he's doing all this crazy stuff because he's a giant nerd like the rest of us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just feel bad for the guy. Before even being proven guilty, you're fired, basically. I, I like it because um, when as soon as you sent me that, like um, on Messenger, I was like, oh, so is he singled out? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> did all of the messages come at midnight? <laughs> <laughs> you know they did. Uh, but yeah, no, I guess now so. his career is Fear the Walking Dead. But don't pump. Okay, Wait, hold, hold on. <laughs> we added a laugh track. Okay, all right. <laughs> but yeah, Dad jokes, we got them. <laughs> jokes and jokes and jokes and ha 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 ha. But yeah, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. 
I feel bad for a lot of those guys because, like, some people, it's like, okay, it's like 40 years past. I'm sorry if you didn't speak up 40 years ago. Well, it's one of those things. I mean, it's it's not okay. So I mean, it's it, not okay. It, 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 we in, don't, in any fashion, we don't it's make not. No. make any any light of that. It's not okay to you know do do that and, and be that way to people. But um, there's also there's also you know sort of something that there has to be onus on everybody in this. You shouldn't be wrong, but you shouldn't have to stand up to accusations that are not right either. Yeah, so no, it's absolutely kind of like not. a. a it's it's like a six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're, it, it doesn't matter what gender. If someone's abusing another person, absolutely, they deserve to go to jail. They deserve what's coming to them. Mm-hmm. But you know, sometimes it, it's tough now to distinguish who's actually coming out for a real reason and who's coming out just because they want a paycheck. Yeah, and and I I feel like that's always been the American way. Yeah, you know, to kind of like, where's my paycheck? Kind of like and that. I feel like a lot of it right now, like Hello, in the President. beginning, in the beginning, it was probably true. Mm-hmm. You know, Harvey Weinstein stuff. I, you know, it makes sense. Every girl has the same story. Mm-hmm. But now it's like they just keep coming out, and it's like I feel bad because some of these people are just paying people now. It's like to go away. So it's like, is it just for money now? The president did this. <laughs> 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 I do not have sexual relations with that lady. <laughs> Hey, look at it this way. You can say what you want about that guy, but he didn't pay nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got away scot free. <laughs> Don't tell Hillary. <laughs> You're never going to be president. She wears the pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I keep my pants. It, it was nice to have a girl who did, you know, didn't choke me. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my pants in a lock box. <laughs> Al Gore, you haven't had sex ever. <laughs> That's not true. There was that time in the 80s. <laughs> then you had George Bush, and that was just... <laughs> the guy He's the only me. president... It's like, so many people didn't like this guy. You know, I, I remember, like, even, like, Kanye West was like, oh, he hates black people and all that. Yeah. And it's like, now he's out of office, everyone's like, wow, man, did we have it good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad thing. Like, he's sitting at home like, <laughs> they miss me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Joking on them. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to go watch, uh, you know, uh, was it... Uh, Kumar, Harold and Kumar again. Yeah. <laughs> or the sh- you remember that show? That's my Bush. Yeah. Well, the, the Josh Brolin did the the jo- the, mm-hmm. the W movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was uh, Cheney done by uh, Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. We hadn't seen him in like years. Yeah, he was in uh, the the book club movie I just watched. And Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> he has a small role in it. I'm here. I'm here because we're chasing a shark. Hey, I mean, come on, Mr. Holland's Opus, what mm-hmm. about Bob? What about Bob, yep. I bought that t-shirt, so <laughs> yeah. I'm going to cosplay as uh, Bob Wiley. Nice. I feel good, I feel great, I feel wonderful. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Are you forgetting something? Gil? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My favorite scene in the movie is the fried chicken. Oh, God. Oh, yes, that that's good. Oh. <laughs> baby, baby step, step outside. Baby, baby step, step. That's good, Bob. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Directed by Yoda. Directed by Frank Oz himself. Oh. Mm-hmm. The more you know. <laughs> I practiced that. All right. So uh, moving on to uh, more news there. Uh, today, the uh, Superman, the new animated Superman movie was leaked out online. Yeah, you said. Death um, of Superman. It's, <laughs> if you do your sleuthing on the internet, you'll be able to find it. I wonder um, if it's on... Um, YouTube, which I don't we're think featured it's probably on. not on YouTube, but it's probably if you have one channel on, let's just say uh, Cody. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Not that we condone that, but if you have it, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's probably on there. I haven't used it in a while. I mean, I, I, I never I, used it. I'm not te- I'm not the technical Justin here. You know, <laughs> you Ryler, I'm just a caveman. They thawed me out from some ice, and then I went to law school. Your technology is scary. I think it's full of demons inside of little black boxes. <laughs> what oh, do I know? Troy McClure, you... You, <laughs> you, you may remember me from such Cody classics as Dial M for murderousness. <laughs> and uh, the erotic adventures of Hercules. <laughs> God, I miss Phil Hartman. Yes. Um, I know we, we talk about Tim Meadows a lot. We do. Tim Meadows is great. Right? And we talk about Dana Carvey a lot and um, Mike Myers. But but truth be told, um, Phil Hartman held that cast together. 
Like, as silly as everybody was and all that, having him as that straight man, a yeah. really, he was really always the dad. solid guy, was just... I he mean, was the dad character I think everything that he's that linchpin that made everything work. Yeah. Well, he was the dad in George Bush. Or not George Bush, Bill Clinton. He was Bill Clinton. He was a dad. He was a... Uh, he did his own Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Which was great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, I pulled chunks of guys like you out of my stool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That was like, yeah. yeah, that was by far one of my favorite casts. I, I, don't, I don't think that they've they've really hit another cast like that. Cause oh, they haven't. I, I watch the new ones and I'm like, every time I see some new featured player, I'm like, who's this chet? You know? Yeah, the sad thing is like, the, you know, they came out 70s, 80s, 90s. They were rocking it. They've had great and, guys, and like then, and Bill then, Hader, like yeah, great Taron Killam, really funny. But um, Jay Farrow, Jay Farrow's yeah. awesome. Well, the thing is, it's the newer ones since like the late '90s to now. They always have like two good cast members. Yeah, and the rest of them well. are just kind of there. I, I think the closest that they came was like right before Kristen Wiig left. Yeah, where they had like Kristen Wiig and they had um, Bill Hader and uh, well, they had Kate Will McKinnon Farrell too. And, Ye early. That's a bit earlier. Was it? Because yeah. I remember Kristen Wiig and Will Ferrell. Yeah, the they year. they were on together, I believe, but yeah. not um not Bill Hader. I think he was only on like four years, and and Seth Meyers and. Uh. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they always have a couple of shining stars lately, but it's not like a full cast like it used to be. Like, the the cast of you look at like the nineties when the eighties, nineties, seventies. Those are powerhouse casts that. If you we, well, those were National Lampoon guys. Well, they were so, start out, yeah. Yeah, they were all National Lampoons and started. If you ever watched the uh, National Lampoon mm-hmm. uh, story on Netflix, there, watch it. It's a great movie. That um, yeah, was really funny. Yeah, it's interesting. Movie. I might watch that again. Actually, it was actually a really interesting oh. movie. Um, but yeah, no, those were such powerhouse casts. If you were thinking about if they were to make a movie with those casts today, like let's just cast a movie with the the ninety four cast of Saturday Night Live. We couldn't afford it. Oh yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. You yeah, have Adam 92, Sandler yeah. and all that. You couldn't afford to make a movie with that. Yeah, cast. to take all those guys. I mean, you think about like Mike Myers. As much as we talk about Wayne's World and all that, he's made more movie, movie doing Shrek, like more money. Yeah. Do, than like any of these other people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sandler's getting there with like the Transylvania. Well, uh, he's the top grossing person out of the. Oh yeah, album. yeah. I mean, easy. Like Shrek Two is still like one of the top grossing movies of all time. Well, I'm just talking about Adam Sandler as a whole. He's the oh, top yeah, grossing yeah. out of all of them. Um, but yeah, no, Mike Myers made a ton. Mm-hmm. Dana Carvey. Um, I, I assume he has money. I'm sure. I'm sure he does. I watched his latest Netflix uh, spe- special. So um, you're welcome, Dana Carvey. <laughs> you got Tim Meadows, who's still in a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think who was all in that. I'm cast. honored to have gotten uh, accepted to his Instagram account. Yes. <laughs> and uh, soon his Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rest in peace, Chris Farley. Yes. Oh, man. Talk about someone who had unlimited potential. Yeah. I mean, that guy could have been, like, the greatest of all time. Oh, naturally. Just because it's physical, the physical humor. He, he also could have eaten more pie than anyone. Al Franken's free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade you an Al Franken for a uh, Chris Kattan. <laughs> <laughs> I would take Al Franken over yeah, Chris probably. Kattan any day. <laughs> At least, I'll trade you a Will Forte. At least out of Al Franken, you got uh, you know you got Stuart Smalley. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Chris Kattan has no memorable except for like the Chichi the monkey or whatever that one was. Well, he's got the Badabi brother, you know. The, what is love? You know. Oh yeah. Got that. But without Will Ferrell, that doesn't work. <laughs> he too like <laughs> Chris Gaines. He loves the Chris Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, if you were to cast a movie. Yeah, because earlier Will cast, Ferrell you... is like the number one comedic actor right now, maybe with the exception of, of Kevin Hart. Yeah, you know, um, who is not great. Kevin Hart, yeah, yeah not, he's good in certain roles. Not a big Kevin Hart guy. Yeah, I don't mind. I him. was gonna watch Fist Fight because I haven't seen that yet. But that's not Kevin Hart. Um, Fist Fight. I is... thought it was him and Ice Ice Cube. No, it's Ice Cube and Charlie Day. Oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> All short guys look alike to me, you know. It's like, Except for uh, Kevin Hart's black and Charlie Day's white, but <laughs> whatever. They know a thing. But they're uh, both tiny and annoying. So I like Charlie Day. And <laughs> always, know. it's always sunny, and kind of the other stuff, he's okay. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, horrible bosses. He's all right. He's a actually. I think he's my favorite one in Horrible Bosses. I mean, in, I get very tired of Jason yeah. Sudeikis. Do you like him in a uh, Pacific Rim? Yeah, same character, pretty much. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like. <laughs> He's he's actually just like scaled down. Yeah. Um. That's that's good. You know, Char- Charlie Day's a good. Charlie Day's he's a good time. 
Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, could you uh, could you replace him in Jumanji? Could he completely replace Kevin Hart in every role? No, he couldn't. No? Okay. I can see him no, eating cake different, different type of comedy. Okay. He yeah, couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. I'm trying to think if anybody could. I mean, I'm just I, not a huge that Kevin Jumanji Hart cast was great. I yeah. don't think you can honestly replace anybody. Jack Black, by far, was the oh, best. Oh, he killed it. Yeah, he absolutely killed and, it. And uh, exciting news, they just announced that Jumanji 2 is coming out. Really? Yeah, they just uh, wrapped uh, the agreement on it, I guess, this week. I really like that movie a lot more than I thought, so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it, too. They paid homage to the original. They didn't mm-hmm. butcher the original. That was what I was afraid of. I was afraid they were going to release it, and it was just going to butcher the hell out of the original that we loved as a kid with Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. They paid homage to it. It was great. They had their own story, their own script. It, it, it would have been neat it wasn't, to see Kirsten it wasn't the, in it. What? It would have been neat to see Kirsten Dunst or like the uh, the little. Kid. I was hoping that she'd like make an appearance, mm-hmm. like you know. But hey, it worked. It was funny. I yeah, I, I I have no complaints about the movie. I thought it was cool. Now we'll see what they're gonna do with another one, though. Mm-hmm. What, so I don't know. What that's the story that's good. Is. I didn't know that. Um, I, I saw that they nixed the um, Crow movie. Yep, Jason thank Momoa said God. he's done. Yeah, thank God, because that's that right. You can't remake that. It's it's it. I mean, I get it. It's like, okay, you put dark eye makeup on it, and he looks like Khal Drogo again and all that. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's not a good idea. No, I say leave that movie as me. I mean, I remember watching The Crow as a kid, and, and yeah, it, was, I, it was great. I freaking love The Crow. It's, it's one of those the movies original that I've probably seen a hundred times. I and remember watching it and then finding out about Brandon Lee, and I was like, damn, really? I remember thinking that the bad guy in The Crow was Sir Guy of Gisborne from uh, the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. <laughs> Why a spoon, cousin? Because you twit its jaw. It'll hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remembered him from. You know. uh, so yeah, they're not going to make that. Um, and then uh, another... I, I'm, uh, I'm losing my train of thought right now. Yeah, I figured. It's, you know. it's getting to that point of the evening where you just kind of doze off and you new, start uh, rambling. New Quentin Tarantino movie was announced. That's going to be coming out. Burt Reynolds is going to be in it. Which one's that? Uh, it's going to be called um, Road to Hollywood or something like that. Or um... interesting. Yeah, interesting. I literally just saw it today. There's, there's that. So that's that's kind of a fun thing. So that's the news uh, as we see it. Well, one thing I do want to cover. One last thing in the news is GameStop possibly becoming the next on the list of stores to go away. I don't even know what to say about this. It's like they're systematically removing everything that we hold dear. They are. They're like, hey, what's what's geeky and nerdy? Let's get rid of it. So it's weird that there's that shift in culture where it's like, okay, nerd culture like that. Have we done this to ourselves by getting everything online? Possibly, and becoming very antisocial. Yeah, I mean, I like talking to people in GameStop. Like, you walk in, you yeah. end up talking for like an hour, and you leave with like an extra copy of Splatoon or something. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I personally, I like going to the stores. I like seeing it, holding it, all that. Because mm-hmm. nothing's worse when you see it online, and it looks like this grandiose like statue or something. Yeah. And then you, you order it, and it comes in the mail, and you're like, this thing looks like crap. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I wholeheartedly so, agree with that. Because that's when I really love Game. Like I liked GameStop. I've always gone to GameStop, mm-hmm. even though I never trade anything. Because you, did you like it when it was called Funko Land? Yeah, I was about to say Funko yeah. Land and all those <laughs> other ones. But I liked it when they started adding like the statues and mm-hmm. stuff. They, when they brought Think Geek in as a partner. How come they don't have statues anymore? You go in and it's like all they have is like that one unsold thing of Goku. Some stores do. Yeah. So and... the the bigger stores do, and I think that that's the problem. I think that's what they need to look at is. Should we just make the stores a tad bit bigger? Because they're so crunched, they can only hold so much stuff. I guess, yeah. I think if they made it just maybe double the size, it's not a huge store. You don't got to go like... Here, here's the thing, too. There's a lot of bad choices on those shelves. There are. Like, I mean, when, when you go in and you see their clearance section, they clearly do not care about money. Because they're just like, oh, we're going to clearance this out and this out and this out and all that. It's like, you had it here for a month. It's like another another Pokemon character that's yeah. been there because we're the Pokemon stop. It's like, guess what? You can also stop by their cash registers in Walmart and find all this crap, too. And it's going to be $5 cheaper. Yeah. What are you thinking? You know? But, you know, that's I, I think they just need to double and offer kind of the, the weird things you can't find. And that, Yeah, exactly. Like, um... You can't even go there anymore and get and get some of the stuff that that you'd be looking for. Like, oh, I want a Guitar Hero guitar or something. Yeah. Like you can't. You've got to go to like a a disc replay or like a, a resale shop for like retro video games or something. 
You know, and, and that's, that's neat stuff that they should. Yeah, be Yeah, Disc Replay is a great store, and oh, yeah. like I said, the thing is, do you is, have one of those out here? No, the closest one to here is Rockford. Oh, I've I've got one in uh, Naperville down the way. Man, yeah. that place is awesome. And the thing is, is, they're double or triple the size of a regular GameStop store, so oh, they can hold I, yeah. more inventory. So that's what I'm saying. Would GameStop be okay if they just doubled the size? Mm. That's and a, it's, I mean, it's an not a, and it's not a huge store to begin with, so doubling in size isn't going to increase, per, you know, cost that much. I, I mean, I don't know, because the, all the ones I've been in are kind of large enough, like bigger than the mall stores and all that. Well, yeah, they're like bigger the than the mall stores, ones. but yeah. It's just, I, I think that they should take a hard look at, like, the crap that they get. Well, see, the thing is, is, okay, there's, well, one thing, too, is they saturated the market, for mm-hmm. one thing, because there's GameStops across the street from GameStops, and I never yeah, understood next to, why. next to uh, mattress firms. Yeah. It's like, Starbucks. <laughs> I'm always like, why is there, like, four of them in this town? Yeah. There's um, two in the same mall. Yeah. You know, it's like, that doesn't make any so sense. I, I don't get that method. You guys but, out of Madden? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, no, the, the GameStop in Rockford, there's two of them right across the street from each other on State Street in Rockford. Um, I know it because I go to Rockford a lot, mm. even though a lot of people think Rockford sucks. Yeah. But, um, well, having been to Rockford... <laughs> actually, downtown Rockford, they're revitalizing it. It's actually turning very nice. The hipsters are moving in. Oh, are they? So, so it's becoming very gentrified. Well, so one time when I was there, I tripped over a hypodermic needle. Oh, very nice. I wouldn't yeah. doubt that. Not... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they have a in game... front of a GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. Well, I think the funny thing, too, is Rockford... See, the thing is, is there's a bigger store. There's a bigger GameStop. But that's about double the size of the normal ones. And they actually have a really good selection of, like, statues and games and okay. everything. The thing is, is I think it had to be double because right next door is Disc Replay. Ah, oh, yeah. So I think that one works well because it has to it has competition right next door. Well, I mean, Disc Replay, you can walk in, it's like, oh, you wanted this rare pop vinyl? We have it. And guess what else we have? Friggin' uh, the special edition of Quantum Leap in the tin or yeah. Battlestar Galactica. All this stuff that no one else is going to carry, and it's in. And how much does a DVD cost at Disc Replay? Three dollars and thirty-three cents. How much does a Blu-ray cost? Three dollars and thirty-three cents. Unless it's a box set or something else that's like brand friggin' new. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, the one thing that I I like is uh, at Disc Replay is they actually the the retro game section is mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah, they've got a lot of good stuff. Like if you're like, oh, I need a Nintendo sixty-four controller right now. Oh, they got it. I mean, oh yeah. GameStop's yeah. trying to get into that, but they don't carry that stuff in the store. I, I did online. see something cool. I saw they had an NES copy of Bucky O'Hare <laughs> there, and I was like, "What? Awesome!" But it was one hundred twenty-four. Wow. It was one hundred and twenty-four dollars. Wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it costs more than financing a Wes Anderson film. <laughs> Maybe someone will give us backing. We can just open the Justin versus Justin store. Yeah, um, that's gonna be a freaky store. <laughs> it would be because yeah. it'd be. A, what's your guys' theme? Whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> Welcome to the Justin and Justin Hardware Store and Sex Toy Emporium. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're nuts! <laughs> nuts! <laughs> want to screw? And then, and then eventually we'll mess up and we'll throw a Knights Templar down the stairs <laughs> and think he's dead. <laughs> and then he'll end up locked in the basement for years. Yeah, because exactly. we'll just board it up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who's going to have a taco stand outside? Um, um, Pablo. Yeah, I mean, you know, our, our buddy Pablo. My name is Juan. Shut up, Pablo. <laughs> He's a brujo. <laughs> so, yeah. That it one. has been a while since we've talked about Ash vs. Evil Dead. It's because so. I don't want to bring it up. It's it's a sad subject. It's a sad story. Even though you brought me an Evil Dead comic. Tonight. I did, yes. And, uh. And, and it is great artwork in that. Honestly. That's pretty cool. I, it is. I would have thought that they took stills from the movie. It looks really good. I know. And I'm so like, whoever drew it be. did a fantastic job. Did a good job. You did a really good job. <laughs> Better than Jared Leto. Which is the same <laughs> much. Because guess what? I fight crime in a rubber suit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But Very guess nice. what? I took a shit in the rubber suit when it was 90 degrees outside. And it was still better than Jared Leto as the Joker. That's like that episode we watched last week of <laughs> <laughs> with uh, Batman and uh, Commissioner Gordon just yep. making fun of of uh, Superman. Oh, if you want to see it later, there is a Batman. Yeah. Where he goes, "We had we had sex that night. I fight crime in a rubber suit. Really seals in the flavor." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Rick and Morty. You know? <laughs> that's, that's lovely. 
That was uh, the over promiscuous Batman on the Batman <laughs> episode. That was great. Oh, and uh, Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she stabs him, and that's not the first time one of us has penetrated the other one with nine hard inches. <laughs> <laughs> Being a little generous there. <laughs> That's what Bane did too. <laughs> I am her protector. <laughs> Which one of these things in your crab mask do you breathe out of? <laughs> the crab. It does it. I saw one of those too and I'm like, man, we should get those. You know? We should. You know, because we could, we could clearly do the Bane, the ball. We do bane. need the Bane. Yeah. We just have an episode where we're just Bane. <laughs> yeah. We're, well, we're already the Bane of everyone's existence. <laughs> We're the bane of everybody's existence. So I wanted to say thank you for uh, the Starfleet technical manu- manual that you uh, picked up for me. That's oh, uh, you're, fantastic. You're more than welcome. Thank you so much. I'm going to be reading through this. Uh, I saw it and it was actually really cool. I mean, yeah. I almost kept it for myself because it was actually so cool to see the schematics of everything. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So and, it's and like, you know what the Trekker I am. Because, I mean, you, you're the Trek fan more than me. So I was like, I have to, I have to relinquish it to the rightful owner because me, I'd look at it once and then go on a shelf. You're only saying it. that because I go to, um, you know, Google beatups for Trek fans specifically. So, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, because sometimes there's like scheduling conflicts because I'm going to a <laughs> Trek meeting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I won't make we, it this month, but we have um, to cancel podcasts for Star yeah. Trek. Which is perfectly fine, because... Well, that's kind of what we're all about. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm never angry. I'm, okay, go for it. One day, there will be, you know, an Event Horizon one. So, you know, and then I'll go and just talk to people about can Event you, Horizon. Can you bring a Lieutenant Lahura one day? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, lady. That was very Will Ferrell. I like, I like that. Yeah. Could he, could he be a captain in a Star Trek movie? I don't know, but he should show up, I think, on um, the Orville. I think he should show up because that would be cool. The Orville's a great show, and I can't wait for the new season That's to come out. It's an amazing out. show. Like, have you been watching? You saw the whole I saw the, Yeah, I saw the first new season. It Man, was great. It is a good show. And they have the writers on there of Star Trek. Like, yeah, they, like, they scalped them. I was really, like, when it came out, I was kind of like, oh, you know, Seth MacFarlane, I'll give it a whirl because it's Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, and and he's very fly by night for me. He is, honest. and like every other thing he touches is garbage. Well, I was like, he's he's such dirty, you know, humor. Is it gonna fly? Ted, great. A million ways to die in the West, not great. Yeah, I I kind of liked a million ways to die in the West, but it's not great. It's okay. It's okay. You know? I've watched it a few times. I own it because it well, Charlie's Theron. So there you go. And there you go. I mean, she does put a flower in Liam Neeson's ass. <laughs> I, I guess and you do like the mustache song so hey yeah. neil patrick harris yeah i mean he rarely phones in a uh <laughs> oh, a, i mean come on you, you gotta love the line the line please don't kill us this sex night <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> giovanni rabisi and sarah silverman yeah. Yeah. yeah or the dad when he farts oh my dick's on fire <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to call me rooster cogburn <laughs> oh that was a great movie Again, Django I, shows up in the end. I, I don't know if it's great. Oh you know? come on! I'm not. Well, look. Get I, me. I'll give you a great movie. A great movie that I I really enjoyed. Um, Three Ten to Yuma. Three Ten to Yuma. That was, was a, a movie great I movie. watched, and I'm like, I walked away from that movie going, that was a great freaking movie. That was a great movie. And you know why? Because Russell Crowe does that to me when I watch him in a movie. Um, American Gangster. He swoons. He swoons you. You're like, I don't know what he does. It's like I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna talk like this. You know. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then he's like, you know, oh, my name is Frank, and I'm this guy, and I'm like, ah, Frank and Russell. That is true. We started watching Gladiator together, and by the end, your your pants were off, and I don't know how. Do you like Gladiator movies, Billy? (laughs) I was like, where are your pants? You're like, I don't know. Russell Crowe happened. (laughs) No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, it's like he's one of those actors, like, uh, like maybe like a Morgan Freeman or something like that, where it's just like, I'm absolutely like, I gotta see what this guy's doing. I'm like, why am I watching Les Mis? I'm like, because. How did I even, you know? Well, you miss. What the fuck is Wolverine talking talking to Borat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. I saw the Highlander. It was shit. <laughs> it's the Highlander was shit. <laughs> oh, that's a great comedy. Yeah. Another yeah. great comedy we were talking about earlier today was uh, Dewey Cox. Oh, man. Such an underrated comedy. Again, we go back to Tim Meadows. You don't want any piece of this. <laughs> you don't want no part of this. I, well, I don't want to. Do. I don't want to become addicted. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> it doesn't. You don't get addicted. I think I will have some of that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's kind of Gomer Pyle. Like when you do, you do. You, you kind of go with little Gomer Pyle. Yeah. And that's how you get the John C. Riley. I mean, come on, you gotta love Dad. I'm going Wrong record. kid, Dad. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's just all mad. <laughs> the mom dances and falls out the window. <laughs> Yo, mama, Wasn't dad, Jonah dancing Hill? to your Was Jonah music. Hill the, yeah, uh, Jonah Hill was the brother. <laughs> It was a Judd Apatow, right? Or um, I believe Adam so. Adam McKay, or I think it's Judd Apatow. Yeah, because you're not cut in half by a machete. Oh, I did. I did see something. Um, I watched. Uh, I watched the the movie that was based on the room. The uh, oh where, yeah, yeah. No, I'd watch that. Yeah. I watched that. That was decent. It wasn't bad. It was interesting. Makes me think that Franco probably you know like he had that part down good, but maybe he understands that he's not a great actor either. <laughs> I don't think he does. You don't think so? I think I think that, he did that, and that just reassured himself that he's like the greatest actor in the world. His brother acted just like circles around him. To be honest, I kind of enjoy his brother more. Yeah, but his brother's yeah. not in many things. It, it's funny he has this Luke Wilson quality about him. Yeah, but he's not annoying, and like he doesn't look as confused as he does. Like, and I was, actually liked him in Neighbors. <laughs> Twenty One Jump Street. He was Twenty One fant- Jump Street was fantastic. He was yeah. With Rob Riggle. Yeah, he was. Why yeah. don't we talk about Rob? Or Twenty Two Jump Street when he gets the end and we move like, next door. <laughs> and uh, move next door. I like in Twenty Two Jump Street, they go to jail. Or they go visit the jail, and uh, yeah, <laughs> hey, get over here. I'm his bitch now. <laughs> That's great. Shut up, my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. You know what they do to guys in jail like me? <laughs> Wait, what do you say? It rhymes with grape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It rhymes with grape. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. So um, I, th- I think one of the most fun uh, parts that we had uh, last week was doing the uh, movie trailer. And I know we, yeah. we did one um, this week to start off. I, I like that. Um you know, just uh, as we continue to grow and learn and all that. Um, I, I know we've got to keep up with the challenges. We recently had a challenge. Yes. So uh, we'll, you can look forward to that. We'll, we'll have something. Um, we won't do it tonight, but um, we, we could do it uh, maybe uh, maybe when I come back from hiatus. Hiatus? Hiatus. <laughs> that is right. You are leaving. Yep. And, I will uh, be here next time. Hopefully you'll have... Uh, You'll have uh, someone we to cover. Do, we do have a special guest joining us next week while Justin is away visiting, uh, you know, the, the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt from the Duo Finds will be making a return. Nice. And actually, he'll be bringing his other duo there, Shannon. Nice. And uh, we'll be discussing Walking Dead, and uh, they visited the Zach Bagans Museum in That's Las fantastic. Vegas. So if you're a fan I, I of feel Ghost like you should have some 30-year-old chewing gum. Oh, I'm sure he probably does. He probably does have some. So, um, so yeah, if you're a fan of ghost adventures or horror stories and stuff, yeah, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk you about say Walking horror Dead. Horror stories. <laughs> I like those. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the whores. <laughs> I got nothing right now. Yeah. That's the worst part. Like, it could go so many places. <laughs> like, really? Yes. I, I set you up and you didn't do nothing with that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I mean that happens every once in a while. So I, I um I still have that feather in my cap that I made you choke on a cookie one time. Sinner, <laughs> God, <laughs> bitches, horse, <laughs> horse, <laughs> Cornelius the pimp. <laughs> He's still alive. He's not even acting or doing nothing right now. Who uh, uh, Sean, Sean Connery? Connery? Yeah, he made his money. He's just living life now. I'm living off residuals. Oh, there's more, Mike. I'm just waiting to die because I'm like eighty. Yeah, I was he... once James Bond, and then I was <laughs> Indiana Jones' father. I was his father. And then I did an entrapment with Zetman Zeta Jones. What a piece of crap. It doesn't matter if it's crap. They said, what should we do? I said, let's make a room full of lasers and let her crawl around in skimpy clothes. <laughs> Take <laughs> I, that, I, um... Michael Douglas. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. I, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> let's go back to that idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great idea. <laughs> I mean, Catherine Zeta-Jones back in the day, she was hot. Yeah, I, and she still is. I mean, when I see pictures of her... Did you like the Zorro movies? I was big on the Zorro movies. I liked movies. the Zorro movies. Mask of Zorro, to me, was like... That was like a superhero movie before the superhero movies came out. It was. It out. was great. It was pretty cool. It was a great remake. Yeah, I, I loved it. Antonio Banderas. I actually see, like Antonio Banderas as an actor. He's not horrible. Um, X vs. Sever and yeah. Assassins and um, uh, Expendables 3. Yeah, he was great in right. Expendables. Oh, dude, and then. So uh good. He's well, fun to watch. What was the one where he played the... He's a, uh, see, there's another guy. Going back to our, our Drew Barrymore. He's not boring. Well, he also brought us uh, chess, uh, our uh, first time growing up naked uh, uh, Selma Hayek. Thank God. In Desperado. Thank God. I remember that. It's great. I, I think that's that. where my love of Selma Hayek comes from is the movie Desperado. So he wasn't... Yeah, he wasn't in From Dust Till Dawn. 
unfortunately. No, he wasn't. Yeah, was he, he was like he was the only Robert Rodriguez actor that wasn't in that movie. Yeah, you know. But he was, he's a great actor when he does come around. But uh, yeah, he doesn't do much. He's done some stuff. I mean, he was in um, Philadelphia. Yeah. You know, um, he was in Interview with the Vampire. Oh yeah, yeah. So he goes he goes back to like ninety two, ninety three. Oh yeah, he goes way far back. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, his recent stuff, like Expendables and everything, his character's great. He plays like the overzealous person. And I mean, he, um, another guy that has not uh, made it into the Marvel movies, and um, he's married to uh, Melanie Griffith. Yes, I'm surprised. She she looks horrible. Yeah, well, you know, he's in love, so. <laughs> and uh, her mother is uh, the woman from The Birds. Uh, I, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Hedren. And uh, they have a sanctuary for large cats and wild animals. I think it's called Roar. Okay. So what they do is they actually rescue these animals and have, like, a sanctuary for them. Oh, well, hey. That's, that's pretty, pretty crazy. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty nuts. Antonio Banderas with his large pussies. I am here to talk about the elephants. <laughs> I'm here to talk about pussies. Another guy who's made a lot of money from Shrek, right? Yeah. You know, That's true, yeah. Cat, yeah. And Boots. Puss and Boots, yes. I, I will tell you absolutely that I enjoyed the Puss and Boots movie. <laughs> it was funny as hell. Selma Hayek in it. Selma Hayek. Uh, I yeah, can watch anything with Selma oh Hayek. God. It's one even of those the, Even her bad movies, I'm like, oh. She has bad movies? What was the one where she gets pregnant in Vegas uh, by uh, Matthew Perry? Uh, that was oh, Fools, Fools Rush, Rush in. in. Yeah, that movie was stupid, but I just enjoyed it for her. That scene on the raft. There's a lot the of tired. Scenes. Yeah, There's um, a lot of scenes yeah. in that movie. Yeah, no, I I always enjoyed. I mean, it. Dust Till Dawn's uh, oh, her on stage. Yep, Dust Till Dawn was fantastic, and she turns into the the vampire. Yeah, her great. her dancing on stage. Wow, I did not see the Frida Kahlo one because I was afraid it, it'd be boring. It, it kind of is boring, but she gets naked. That's, that's I mean, that's, I mean, it kind of takes away with the unibrow, but you're still like, ooh, something behind. Yeah, I mean, I, I need a, a I need a little bit more, you know. I mean, like, I need something. Desperado was was great. Once she upon was, a time in Mexico. Actually, one of those she was really good in lately was uh, the Hitman's Bodyguard. I gotta see that. I you do have that. to watch that. I, movie. That is a great movie. So Sam Jackson, people. a uh, friend of mine. Um, shout out to Mark on the Old Man Wade show was saying that that's like one of his favorite movies right now. Well, I mean, okay, and it's my favorite actor. Yeah, well, you got two <laughs> of your favorite actors in it because mm-hmm. you got Ryan Reynolds driving around Sam Jackson. Oh, that's that's just gold right there. And then you throw Selma Hayek in there. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic movie. Like, do, I, do they make a Driving Miss Daisy reference? I don't think they do. Oh, damn. But they possibly might, and I just may have not okay. or remembered <laughs> it. But it's a great movie. Yeah, you got to watch it. It is fantastic. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. watched it twice now, actually. Oh, twice. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta do that. I gotta get on that. Yeah, once between once, that and that uh, Superman versus Doomsday, that uh, Death of Superman one. Yeah, I mean, I gotta get on those movies. Well, I like how we how we watch our our movie recommendations. I watched it twice. Oh, I gotta watch it then. <laughs> well, I mean, that that's the thing. It's like I feel like if you're gonna talk about a movie, you should probably have a good idea of what it is. Oh, naturally. Like cause... the Hellboy one, I watched twice. Like I haven't really said much about it and all that, but it's like it was really good. Well, and there's a lot of movies. It. Yeah, you watch it once, and there's so much that you miss. That's why I almost I I almost have gone to watch Avengers Infinity War again. Yeah. Just because I know I've probably missed a lot. It's still in theaters, right? Yeah, it is. Still. I definitely want to go again. Because yeah. like I know there's so much I probably missed, mm-hmm. and just watching it the first time because in your mind you're thinking I've read this, I read that, and I want this to happen. When's it gonna happen? I, I can't wait to get a hold of Ready Player One. You know, and just oh, like yeah. really piece through and, and dissect that movie and just go through and be like, oh, what's this? Oh, and then. Speaking of which, tonight I saw the trailer for Wreck-It Ralph 2 and it reminds me of Ready Player One. The animation looks amazing in that movie. Like, that to me is so much better than Pixar. The other Disney animation company yeah. that does that, they had every single princess on there and it's like you take every animation style, mm-hmm. emulate it into 3D models. I'm like, that is fantastic. It does look good. I mean, I'm definitely going to go watch it. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm going to wreck it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no part of this, Ralph. <laughs> I believe I do. Do you, do you think Tim Meadows is in it? I don't know. Let's see. I I mean, I would be shocked if he is. But you know. oh, Talk amongst yourselves. I'm feeling verklempt. That's right, folks. Welcome to Justin vs. Justin, the only podcast dedicated to their love of Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows. All the time. The ladies' man himself. Sarah Silverman, John C. Riley. What kind of hat is that, by the way, back there? Is that a Rugrats hat? Um, Yes, it's a Chucky hat. I thought so. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... Alan uh, Tudyk's in it. Yes. Um, 
Nathan Fillon. Mandy Morris in it. Kristen Bell. Those are all the princesses. Ming Na Wen. Those are literally all the princesses. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and it is all the princesses from all the movies. Wow. Anna Ortiz, uh, Adina Menzel. Yep. So that's Paige O'Hara, Linda Larkin, Irene Bedford, Jane Lynch. Jane. Yeah, she was uh the girlfriend. Tahara B. P. Henson. Taraj B. Henson. Yeah, that's. I, I, I bet she plays names. the villain. I don't know. No, I don't know. We'll see. Her and her sexy ways on Empire. I she knows say, what she, she did. She has very seductive eyes. Oh my god, it's ridiculous. I will give her that. She has very, very seductive eyes. You know who does not do it for me? That kind of pisses me off. Uh, Tiffany something, the the comedian that's everywhere right now. She's so annoying. Tiffany? Yeah, she's she's in that um, Uncle Chuck movie or whatever, the the basketball movie. She's he's like, were you watching me sleep? And she's like, you dumbass. Oh, that yeah. chick. Yeah, yeah she's, she's so uh, annoying. Yeah, like she was on Def Jam, I guess, like years Tiffany ago. Tiffany Haddish. Yes, yes, she annoys me. Yeah, she wouldn't do it for me. She's yet. not my thing, you know. Like like her comedy, you know. There's there's better options, I feel. But she's kind of the it girl right now, I guess. You know, since um. Uh, what's her name fell out of favor. What? Um, I don't know who else. Who else would take that role? I, Amy Schumer type of role. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I will. I will see that movie actually though. That um. Was Uncle it? Drew. Uncle Drew. I. It Honestly, looks, I'm like I'll probably go watch it because I kind of want to see it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I used to watch the NBA a lot as a kid, so it looks like Space Jam. It, it does. It, it looks like um. You know um. NBA. NBA uh, Jam 2004, or no, uh, 1996. <laughs> well, the, well, the thing is, like, yeah, I watched the NBA. He's and on it's fire! Like, That's all these guys I used to watch. It was Reggie Miller and Chris Webber and Shaquille O'Neal. It's my childhood. All they're missing is Jordan. Yeah, pretty and, much. And Charles Barkley that shows up and goes, terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. Terrible, 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 terrible. terrible, terrible. terrible, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, is Carl Malone say a rap is crap? Carl, Carl Malone. <laughs> That was that was always a great skit that uh, they had on the Man Show with Carl Malone. That was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> Carl Malone say a rapper's crap. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big Utah Jazz fan. <laughs> Just because I felt like I'm like oh, you pick two terrible things and put them together. <laughs> no one likes jazz. <laughs> what the fuck is Utah? Yeah. That's we why, need a uh, professional team here. Mm, <laughs> basketball is the way to go. Oh, so you're talking like the uh, beginning of basketball, where yeah, like, pretty much, yeah, <laughs> and the, the beers and the hookers, yeah. And... The, well, the Milwaukee Bucks moved to Utah, where there is no jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, that was great. Yep. My favorite basketball movie of all times, though, is still Semi Pro with Will Ferrell. You know, and, I don't think and, it's uh, a Woody Harrelson. I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's one of those movies that didn't quite hit all the notes. It didn't. It didn't know? go off for a lot of people, but I mean. There's some great one-liners in there for like sports yeah. people because I mean, oh, come yeah. on, how great is it when he's sitting in the locker room? And he's like, "We traded our washing machine for him." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And uh, and Andre Benjamin was in it. Yep. Uh, Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Good role for Woody Harrelson. It was a comedy. You haven't seen him in those in a while. So uh... I'm incapable of puking. <laughs> <laughs> the, P- the local PBS came and did a special. <laughs> It was funny, too, just to see the lengths that Will Ferrell would go to as Jackie Booth. And then he had uh, Andy Richter as, like, his little <laughs> yeah. sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy Richter, I mean, that was when he was off Conan, I think. Well, the, the great thing about that movie is, is it is a true, probably, you know, depiction of, like, basketball back then. <laughs> when it's like, well, like, I like the beginning when they're just like, hey, you can't score, why? Corn dogs, why? Because <laughs> if, if we hit 100 points... He's gonna have to buy everybody in here a corn dog. <laughs> oh man, how corrupt! It's well, like that one guy that makes it. He's like, uh, it's yeah, the, it's the, the Russian check. guy that doesn't speak English. Fuck you, <laughs> whatever. <his name. laughs> or and, uh, and again, not a terrible movie, not a great movie, but it's got some funny. Th- I think I rented it from like the library and watched it. <laughs> I mean, come on, the referee is the Reverend. He's like, fuck you, Reverend. <laughs> fuck you and your family. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> That's fun stuff, though. <laughs> so, um, like, like I mentioned, this week I'm going to be um, on vacation, driving out to uh, see my my uh, kids in Connecticut, and um, fun stuff like that. So we're we're going to do a lot of geeky stuff, I think, on the road. Awesome. We're going to listen to some podcasts. We're going to listen to a ton of Weird Al because that's what we like to do. Awesome, because yeah, um, you're going to hijack them and bring them back. Uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I did pre-order the uh, pop vinyl of the Fat Weird Al. Oh, nice. So that'll be coming out this month. 
So. Doom, 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 doom. Your body's wide, but mine is too. Better watch your mouth or I'll sit on you. See, we'll have to see what pops I get because uh, I finally pulled all my pops out of, like, storage. And I, I, I realized I got kind of a pop addiction. <laughs> yeah, I have a similar issue, so I've stopped buying pops. Yeah, like, I'm like, all right, Abe Sapien and, and Kelbo- Hellboy, I'm, like, cutting it off. Well, like, the problem like, is uh, I got the girlfriend into them now. Oh, yeah? So now she's like, oh, I want this one, and I want that one, and I want this one. So what kind of pops does she like? She's really big into 90s Nickelodeon. That's a great choice, though. So she's, like, she's got all the, I bought her all the Ah Real Monster ones. Oh, like Yublina and Crom and Ipkiss. Uh, She wants all the Rugrats. God, I love Crom. Crom was so funny. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so she's really big into 90s cartoons. And 90s TV and stuff like that. Like, they have Space Jam ones and everything. Yep, yep, Space Jam. That's pretty cool. Me, I just, I see those. I'm like, I want Do you want display them? I do have, in, in my bedroom. Nice, very nice. Because, yeah. I'll take your word for it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to come watch? I mean, she's sleeping. It'll be awkward, but. <laughs> <laughs> I watch you when you sleep. <laughs> but I didn't realize how many I actually had. Because, I mean, for the for the show, we only I only pulled out about three of them. Yeah, so you had you had Bane, and now you have I had Ash, Bane and Ash, Pablo, and, and Kelly. Yeah, you you bought me those three, and I, I pulled out. I actually have like five Batmans, and <laughs> well, you, yeah, you had two of them in uh, the the never seen Batman episode that yeah. we had. So and I was like, yeah, and I'm like, man, I forgot I had all these. I had Batman, and uh, I, had, I had a Negan, and some. Other... I have the dude, and I have Walter. Oh, nice. I have the entire cast of Labyrinth. I I didn't get the other. Um, uh, Jareth, though I only got the one, I didn't get the white Jareth. Yeah. Um, I have the entire Dark Crystal. I have all of the Fraggles, except for I found out there's an Uncle Traveling Matt. Damn it! I gotta <laughs> find it. I have a Batman from the Arkham game that a friend gave yeah, me. Yeah, actually, I have Facebook. that Batman. So I have the Batman Arkham. I um I I sent someone um um just this uh, random Colossus figure I had, and he's like, oh, I got something for you. He sent me back a pop vinyl of Batman. I'm like, that's so cool. You know, and um, then my nephew gave me one, too. So that's all I have for Pop. Well, no, I have Hellboy and um, Abe Sapien, too. And then the Booster and the Beetle. And See, I think that's uh, it. Right now... But yeah, I have so many. It's the, like, right now, the ones I, I'm going to go look for are the Freddy, the Jason... The Leatherface. Did you see the pixelated ones? I saw they the pixelated ones. I didn't. I don't. I'm not a fan of the pixelated ones. I like the actual ones. So I'm gonna so go. So Freddy on, and Jason. You know, Leatherface. Leatherface. Uh, I don't know that I've actually seen that movie. You never seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Not the original. I've seen the the remake with Jessica Biel in it. Oh, you never saw the one with? Never. Uh, yeah, never saw. You it. never saw the one with Matthew McConaughey. Well, that was Next Generation. I did see that. Yeah. So yeah. But uh, but not the original. Uh, so yeah, we're we're talking about possibly going out to uh, Iowa this weekend to a store called Bam. Ooh, it's a bookstore. It's like Barnes and Nobles. It's only it, it, they don't have any Illinois, which sucks because their pop selection is free. You're not talking huge. about books a million, right? Yes. Th- there's one of those literally in the Fox Valley Mall. Really? Yes. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Go you know why I know? Because they sell comic book frames for four ninety nine. They have comic books and all this. Because I went to the mm-hmm. one in Iowa. I didn't know they had one in Illinois. Because I asked the guy when I was there last time, do you have one in Illinois? I, I went to one in Florida. Um, and I was like, wow, this place is great. And then um, I was in the Fox Valley Mall over in Aurora. <laughs> Aurora, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> and uh, they had one over there. Well, now I don't have to drive to Iowa. I'm serious, yeah. Unless their pop selection is not as good. Because the one in Iowa. They had a sizable pop selection. Yeah, the one in Dubuque. Oh, man, their pop selection. It was like four stories tall. It was huge. That's that's a lot though. Yeah, so they had a this lot. This is not that big, but it's pretty big. Yeah, the one in Dubuque had. I I I, you're there. I think I spent like three hundred dollars. I was there in the one in Dubuque. I don't know what to say to that, but um, okay. <laughs> not on just pop vinyls. Just so like, while you're there, you can go to Disc Replay, which is right across the street from the mall. So you can hit Disc Replay, and you can hit. Well, I go to Disc Replay in Rockford, so I go to those. Oh well, because we're have, we're in Rockford every other weekend. They have tons of pops there. Yeah. So. Well, and then. Uh, I, I have a friend. I do have a friend who's uh, currently in the military. A, f- a friend that I met on Amalgamania. My friend Will, who has an immense pop addiction. Yeah. And he has all the special editions, like uh, the the special ones that you can't get, like the golden version of like something or anything. And he showed me some of this stuff. Um, and he sent us us pictures. He has like a friggin' wall full yeah. of pops. My my buddy uh, Ryan, who has you know he's, he's oh, chimed yeah. in on yeah, the show. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan. Yep. Um, we talk about geek number life. one listener. Yeah, number one. Yeah, he's number one. He's the one that makes suggestions of what we should talk about and everything. Uh, he's got a pretty extensive. I like pop how he posts on our page and social media. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> 
they have sent you a direct message. <laughs> Occasionally we get we get a, a you know a comment from him, but uh, yeah. So next, uh, not this weekend coming up, but the weekend after, we're probably going to Mall of America. So I'm thinking I probably find some good geek stuff there. I tell you what, I'm feeling generous right here. I think that what we should do is try to figure out something that defines us as a podcast. And try to find it, and it's got to be recent, I'm sure, um, in terms of pop. And we're gonna do a yeah. pop final giveaway. Well, the thing is, is the cool thing is you can make your own pops. I did not know that. Yeah, if you go on the pop thing, I think. Well, they used they did it around Christmas, that you can make your yourself a pop and actually get it made. It was like, you know, like fifty bucks, but it'd be really cool to get one made. I, I told Samantha. I'm looking a, this up now. That'd be a great Christmas gift if you could just make me into a pop. <laughs> Because I'm like, I don't think I need anything else after that. So, how do you do that? I mean, I know the pop yourself. Is that what it's called? Well, there's the version where you can do it like digital. Create your digital popleganger with pop yourself. Yeah, you can make a a digital one. But I actually saw that, I I swear that you saw that you could actually buy an actual pop of you. Unless there was a custom store that I was at. Uh, I don't know. I mean, um. Pop yourself, digital poppleganger, yada yada yada. How to make custom pop figures. You should funk of yourself. Digital avatar. Yeah, I don't know. Pop factory in Washington, maybe. Oh, maybe this is one. Do, do, do. They have the DIY pops on Amazon. I don't want that crap. I want like a real one. <laughs> You're like, I want the real deal, you bastard. And they can, uh, you know, accentuate my uh, my features and all that and. You know. I would like you to bring out my baby blue eyes. Be like, you look a lot like Matt Damon. <laughs> How would you like your pop? I want to be ripped. <laughs> <laughs> that Sir, Kylo you... Ren's got ripped abs. <laughs> Sir, you have a big belly. Shut your mouth. I want to have ripped <laughs> like Jesus. <laughs> we don't have that much plastic. <laughs> oh. I, I, I hate to say this, but you'd probably have to make me in my yellow Sinestro shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then Notice we'll, I didn't wear it tonight, okay? And, and if if I ever did find that, I would order that for you. And I, when you open it, I would just be like, "Oh, I've never seen this shirt." <laughs> <laughs> you dick. <laughs> did they make a ladies' man pop? I don't know. Did they make a Cornelius pop? Uh, they made those those cheap not pop things of yeah. those, but I think they did make a or, Cornelius Orbeez or whatever. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so dumb. How great would that be? Silver gold. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe we think of it. I wish Do they, they have made a Wayne's pop. No, I, don't, I haven't seen one yet. I think we talked about that yeah. in the episode that they need to what make. What a those. travesty that is! And there's no goon pop either, is there? Uh, no, I don't believe there's a goon pop. Those would all be perfect things for the podcast. Let's see. So, <laughs> Even though now we're just audio. <laughs> well, there is uh, Ren and Stimpy too, so maybe that's something. There is Ren and Stimpy. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey. <laughs> let's see Wayne's world. If not, this this should go in that Wayne's World box that they're going to send us. That would still be great. Del Preston pop. Actually, is there a Wayne's World pop? Is it like a custom? No, someone made them. Yeah, I figured. how they look? They look pretty good. I'd buy them. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. They nailed Wayne. Yeah, like I would totally buy that. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, it's a custom Wayne, feel Wayne weird. and Garth. I would totally buy those. I, I want... If if you are the person that I'm looking this up online, uh, actually it's in the UK. It looks like oh boo, Pound you stirring. British people and your talent and your tea and crumpets, and horrible teeth. <laughs> I say Michael Caine is part of that. <laughs> <laughs> so is Superman and everybody else, but they can go eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> him and his mustache face. He him wasn't even it, part of our podcast. Him and his handsome. Good looks, Henry Cavill. Rugged, good looks, and boyish charms, and, and Count Monte Cristo mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're getting to that time of night where we're just lamenting mustaches all over. I think we maybe we should we should cut it short here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on our journey. Thank and, you uh, for listening to our soothing voices as you make whoopee with the wife. That's right, because there's one thing podcasts are known for is making babies. <laughs> it's all whoopee all the time, as in Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fool to think anyone wanted nude pictures of Whoopi Goldberg. 
<laughs> you asked for nude pictures of B. Arthur. Yes. <laughs> that chick from the Golden Girls? <laughs> <laughs> B. Arthur, outstanding. <laughs> Uh, well, everybody, we want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Justin vs. Justin. Eight is great. And just remember, if you think this is bad, it can only get worse from here. Or wait, better. Or worse. My therapist says that we're doing well. <laughs> the voices in my head say I'm doing really good. I went to the deep place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, so uh, tune in next week. Uh, it's going to be special guest uh, Matt Quinnen and Shannon. From the duo finds, filling in for Justin. I'm looking forward to it. And then when he returns from his trip, we'll be saying, you have been permanently replaced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, my name's in the title. You can't. He's like, you're going you're gonna to be at the door knocking. I'm like, turn off the lights so he doesn't think we're home. He, Matt's, Matt's going to be like, I'm Justin with an I. <laughs> spelled M-A-T-T. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> and literally, he doesn't know this when he comes back from vacation. He does have a replacement. Matt Damon. <laughs> Hey, if you can replace me with the Martian, more power to you. <laughs> oh, or uh, what are we going to get? Uh, what, Alan what, Tudyuk? What al- actor could I get that hasn't been in anything forever? It just <laughs> um, Charlize Tilton. <laughs> You'd be here for cheese on a Ritz cracker. We've got Jennifer Tilly. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me on your podcast. <laughs> What? <laughs> we got her here for twenty dollars and a hot sandwich. The ghost of Robert Jim. Mm. <laughs> it's Will Wheaton. <laughs> no, because he would evilly take over. The I was podcast. about to say he probably would take over. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I heard Chris Hardwick's looking for a job. Uh, yeah. Oh, poor Zing. guy. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll be getting his Stab job the back. Night. Yeah. I don't know though, because then those people are going. I can't go back on my word. That How makes about me the Tiger Woods. Well, he. I mean, they'll figure something out. He can always sue someone. Or yeah, I'm sure he'll sue. Yeah. Well, anyway, so tune in next week. Thank you for tuning in this week. Follow us on social media: mm-hmm. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, follow us on YouTube. Follow us on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and I'm sure we're going to spread our wings, and you'll find us in a lot of other places coming up very soon. Yep, still um, YouTube, iTunes, all those all those places that are great. Um, you can go on there. You can subscribe. You can look us up. Um, you can find us also in Amalgamania on Facebook. And uh, don't forget to check out um, one of our favorite places, Comic Watch, comic-watch. And you can check them out for your news and your uh, comic book reviews. And also, don't forget to leave us uh, voicemail. And we do have the phone lines that are open. Yep, and it's... we'll be posting that number so we don't have to pull it from our memory. Yeah, because I always forget it. <laughs> but uh, it says, yeah, I won't even try to recite. I can't wait to hear the stuff that we get, and I'm I'm hoping that someone mentions. Yeah, it's po- I, I put it in the uh, description of the friend. videos, so if you see it, <laughs> or you can shoot us an email at Justin with an I versus Justin with an E at gmail dot com. So that's J U S T I N versus V S. Yeah. J U S T E N at gmail.com. Yes. So, yeah, find a way to contact us. We want to hear from you. Be a part of the show. We got a fancy new mixer board here. I can uh, plug your phone in and we can take phone calls. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. We can call her number 12. <laughs> you won a fantastic. So you're saying the clothes Perhaps. in your closet come to life at night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. La, la, la. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm Justin with an E. I'm Justin with an I. Stay classy, San Diego. Dick. Ah, Venus edition. <laughs>